Well, in this one today, we're going to get to something that's not talked about very much, and that's engine bearings, the tools you're going to need to do it, some tips to get them in easy, and uh, some of the details on the different stationary gear bearings. So let's get to it. new ones we're gonna get into that a little bit more here um, with the proper bearings that you're gonna need for the stationary gears and the differences like I was saying but uh, first you're gonna need some tools you're gonna need these rotor bearings stationary gear bearings you're going to need this press that you might be able to see in this um, so first things first is you got a bad bearing you got to get it out so Right here, bad bearing. You're gonna slide this. Well, let's start with first, you got a notch on the bearing. So you don't wanna press it out this way or you're gonna do some damage. So you're gonna flip this rotor over so the notch is facing down. You're gonna take this tool, slide it in here. Then you're gonna get up, you're gonna walk over to this press and set it up. To the right uh, deal here. We're gonna move the camera over and uh, we're gonna show you exactly how to press those out. So we come over to this press. First things first, you gotta set this so you don't press the bearing and the tool into it or you're gonna mess up the tool when they're not cheap. They're like, well, kind of, hundred and a half, something like that. And bring this rotor over, center it up so the hole's in the center. You can use your hand to go underneath and you want to get the press center on it or you're going to press it out crooked and then it's as simple as pump away and when I get to it we're just touching just now and you want to make sure it's flat on it and not sideways and crooked or you're going to push it out crooked and then you're going to have bad news so you're going to start giving it some force you're going to hear it pop so now it's moving Keep at it, put your hand underneath, or else it's going to fall on the floor, and then you're going to need a new tool. So this is the simple part of the entire process. And then uh, it's going to get a little more involved putting them back in, and when we get to the uh, stationary gear bearings, there's a little more to it as well. So we're almost out. It takes a little bit of force. They shouldn't just fall out. If they fall out, you're going to have more problems, like a bad rotor. So now it's out, and as you can see, this bearing was spun. It's got copper in it. I don't know how well you can see. And then there's the little notch I was talking about on the corner. If you try to press that down through the bearing, you're going to score the rotor all the way down the side, and you don't want that. So bearing's out. Trash. This, somewhere safe. Get your rotor out of here. So you're going to want to clean up the inside. Then, like I was saying, onto our stationary gears. There are two different types of stationary gear. Gears for the front and the rear. So you have anything that's from 93 up. And you're going to have a little screw that holds your stationary gear in. Or your bearing in. Because it's a journal bearing. And then your older ones have the same notch as the rotor. And with that notch, same deal. You gotta push it out the other way. So with this, we're gonna come over to a vise. Put it in where you can get at it. But you gotta watch your little dowel here because you press it out. If you get too into it, then just with a regular Phillips screwdriver, sit here and you got to turn them out if you don't take these out and you try to push the bearing out you're gonna have a dunzo bearing and a dunzo everything and then you're gonna to need to get a new stationary gear but it takes a little bit of force 
So you want to push down good and spin them out. And you can strip them very easy. So like I said, you want to push down onto it, get a good size flat head so you're not slipping on it. Because then you'll need a new one of these as well. A little tedious because it will take some force coming all the way out because you're they don't really want them to fall out so they put a little bit of thread sealant on them <coughs> loctite whatever so these technically you're gonna take this tool like I said same thing come back over to the press which we still have the rotor in the way so we're gonna get that out of the way And then, same deal, slide down through the center. These are a little bit smaller, so you don't want the big hole. Like I said, watch your dowel again. And we're gonna have to go 10 miles to get this down to this. Same thing, you want to make sure it's coming down flat, or you're going to screw the tool up, or the stationary gear. Like I said, feel for underneath, so you're not going to drag the tool into it. Same deal, press it, down. see, about tops, because you put some force on it, you're talking probably about a couple tons, anyways. Then get ready to catch your tool. toast. Go up again. Good. Now like I was saying the bearings are different on these ones because they've got holes all the way across. Certain ones of these holes that is where that little dowel pin is gonna, well screw is gonna keep the bearing from coming in and out. They have no notch where the other bearings have a notch, just like the rotors do. And like I said, you gotta push them out the right way or you're gonna destroy everything. So we're gonna come back and we're going to show you the two different bearings and then we're gonna press them back in the rotor and show you a little trick to make it a little easier. So onto the uh, stationary gear bearings, there are differences like this one is the newer 93 and up RX-8s, stuff like that. You see all the holes through the journal and the older style, which has the notch, like the rotor bearing that I was talking about, and uh, that's what keeps that in place. Now, you need to line this notch up with the notch in the stationary gear bearing. If not, you're done, start over, press it back out. So, what I do to make that a little easier, I don't know how well this is gonna show, is I find the notch, take a triangle, lay it flat as possible. I don't know if you'll be able to see, and uh, take the straight edge, follow it down. Now I do that on both sides of the notch. As you can see on this, which helps line it up. And then the same thing on the rotor bearing. Uh, that way, because you have the little notch in the rotor as well. So that is the biggest thing is lining this up because if you don't, your bearing's done. Start, start over, find your bearings. Um, so we'll get to uh, pressing those in. And... All right, we're gonna press this in now. Um, the biggest thing is to make sure you're flat, flush, center. Center is the biggest thing possible. You don't wanna be pushing this thing in sideways, crooked, or anything else. So you wanna square everything up, make sure you're square on here. And like I said, your notches, make sure they're lined up. So then you're just gonna come down same thing, flatten, and then just keep pressing. If you notice that it's not going to line up with your notch, stop. 
push it right back out. Because, like I said, you ram it all the way home, and that's it. And they should go in with some force. If they're not going in with force, you need a new station near your be that bearing. Because uh, you need tension on these, or they're just going to spin. So, you want to go down <clears throat> all the way. But there's a point to where you have to stop. So we're just about there. A little bit farther. And right there, we're going to release. pumping the hell out of this thing a million times again. We're going to toss everything. Let's move that out. Pull this out. Pull the tool out. Set down. Like I said, you want to make sure you're nice and even with this. You don't want to be down too far or I guess my camera went wonky. So like I said before the camera went wonky, you want to be just a little bit under this edge. Um, you don't want to be way down in, crooked, cockeyed, any of that stuff because you got your bearings that right on here for your front stack. So just even, that's good. You know, you can't catch your fingernail on it, that stuff. So uh, let's get the uh, rotor over here and get that bearing pressed in. All right, so the same thing with the rotor. You want to get it as center as possible you don't want to be going in cock, sideways, anything. I usually leave the bottom open so I can feel for how far I went down in. Uh, because if you're not paying attention, you can press it right down through the other side. And it's a little harder to see on this because of the stationary gear. Um, so I bring a flashlight over with me so I can watch it the entire time. So like I said, those lines substantially help you with doing the rotor bearing. <clears throat> so. I'm going to start pressing this in. Like I said, you notice that it's getting wonky or anything like that, going in way too hard, way too loose. Stop. All right, so let me get pressing this in. And uh, see, it, it wanted to cock a little bit on me, and then it just set itself center. That's the biggest thing, like I said, is getting this flat. So we're going to push down. Like I said, I have the flashlight, because you have to look down in here. It's uh, not the easiest view. And uh, like I said, I usually feel from underneath. We got quite a ways to go. But I'm going to check, make sure we're still lining up. So far, so good. I'm going to keep going. Because like I said, you, you can damage these bearings easily. And then you're buying new bearings. And uh, if you got to buy new bearings a bunch of times, it starts getting expensive quick. <clears throat> Apparently, my press is a little loose. There we go. Now we're going. I was wondering why I was pumping so much here. And another check. Still good. So now we're even with the stationary gear. So we got just a little ways more to go. Are still good and uh, just check to make sure the camera didn't go wonky again I don't know what that was all about we're almost all the way in so I usually double check down in there the notch is still okay feel and might as well even just look I got about it eighth of an inch so that might have been it nope just a little bit more and we're good so let me uh, get this out of here we'll go over there and I'll show you what where we're at
All right, so now that we got our rotor bearing pressed in, um, like I said, you want everything to be nice and flush on both sides, notched in. Uh, let me see how well I can show you this. It's gonna wanna follow my face. Um, deep groove bearings, um, competition bearing, stuff like that. Should use higher oil pressure regulator with them. And then you have your standard yellow bearing, um, which pretty much is good for just about anything. Normal groove, streetcar, uh, gives a little more clearance or a little more RPM. Uh, the part number for those is that number right there. And then deep groove is that number right there. So same thing with the uh, front gears. So your old bearing style is that number. And then your new bearing style for 93 through RX-8 hardened gears, um, not the same as the four port. The four port uses the old bearing. Is that number right there? I don't know how well you can see it. I'm trying here. Uh, so that's pretty much it on the bearings for right now. If you guys want to see more on uh, side seals, oil control rings, and the control ring springs. Uh, lots of people like to put the control ring springs in wrong. So if you guys want to see something on that, just comment uh, down below, stuff like that. And uh, that's pretty much it for this video. So like, share, whatever, help us out. And until uh, the next one.